Hi, my name is Katie. Today we're going to be trying a chapter of four different horror books. So the idea behind this is it's coming out on the first day of the Summerween readathon. I will link Gabby and Olivia's channels below. They're hosting this readathon that I am super, super excited to participate in where we read spooky things. Full disclosure, I tried to do this with thrillers. I filmed the majority of the video, picked the book I was going to read, got halfway through it, and then went to go edit the footage and there was no audio on any of the footage. So we're trying it again with horror instead. So from that failed video, I picked My Lovely Wife and I'm really enjoying it so far. So if you need a thriller recommendation, I recommend this. I'm only halfway through it, so I don't know how it ends yet, but so far I'm having a great time. Now I will be traveling during the first half of the Summerween readathon. I'm going to my parents' house to help pack up all their stuff because they're moving. So I'm getting all of my childhood stuff out of there and you know, donating or selling or getting rid of most of that stuff and then taking everything back that I want to keep. So I am trying to limit the amount of things that I'm bringing as much as I can. So I have some paperbacks that I'm gonna bring like tinfoil butterfly, but I also have these hardcovers and larger books that I want to make sure that I really want to read before I put them in my suitcase because they're going to take up a lot of weight and space. So I thought it would be cool to do a try a chapter video where I can try a chapter of these and see if I like them and then pick one to bring with me. So the four books we're going to be reading are Mexican Gothic by Silvia Moreno Garcia. In this book, we have this young woman and her cousin is sending like a weird letter back to their family because she's married this guy and she's at his estate. She's like, hey, I need help. Like weird things are going on. So she goes to make sure that her cousin is OK and we find out what scary things are going on. Next, we have Lakewood by Megan Giddings. This is a medical horror. So our main character, I believe, gets into this clinical trial type program where she's being experimented on for medical reasons. And it's horror. <laughs> so something goes wrong. Then we have The Year of the Witching by Alexis Henderson. And this is about a young woman in this puritanical society. There's a prophet, there's a dark wood, there's witchy things. I can't wait to read this one. My mom is on a bit of a witch kick right now, so this would be a good one to bring. And then the last one is The Last House on Needless Street by Catriona Ward. And I have heard mixed things about this. I think it kind of all comes down to the twist, whether or not you like the twist or not. But this is narrated by a cat, a black cat. My mother has two black cats. So this would be a nice one to bring with as well. So I'm going to read the first chapter of all of these. After I get off work, I will start reading our first one and I will let you know how it goes. I'm done with work and I have finished reading the first chapter of Mexican Gothic. So far, I am interested. It's a little slow paced for me. We started leaving this party and our main character is talking to her father. We get this letter from her cousin, which is very unsettling. Um, she thinks she's being poisoned by her husband. So our main character, Noemi, is going to have to go figure out what's up with her cousin, make sure she's okay. I'm interested, but not feeling like I have to keep reading. So the next one we're gonna pick up is Lakewood, but I made some cookies. So we're gonna eat those first and then we'll read Lakewood. finished the first chapter of Lakewood. It was only 10 pages, but I'm already a little bit more intrigued at what's going on in Lakewood than I was in Mexican Gothic. We've met our main character and her mother, and our main character's grandmother has just died. So we've attended the funeral, and then her grandmother has like asked them to go to the casino afterwards. 
And so we see them at the casino and her mother is having some medical problems. And we kind of understand that there's a lot of debt and like medical debt, like her grandmother's debt, her mother's debt. And our main character is also in college. And it just seems very overwhelming. Her life feels very stressful. So she's got a lot of things that she's juggling and I feel stressed. I also feel like with the medical stuff, something I'm already feeling a little unsettled and I wasn't getting that with Mexican Gothic. Besides the letter, that was the only unsettling part of it. And I love a horror to be like really atmospherically unsettling. That's just like my personal preference. So, so far I think I prefer Lakewood. So now I'm gonna read the first chapter of The House on Needless Street and I'll let you know my thoughts. Okay. <laughs> um, I've read the first chapter of The House on Needless Street and I also read a couple pages of the second chapter because I am so confused and so intrigued and I'm having a great time. Um, the first chapter was told from Ted's perspective and the second chapter is told from Olivia's perspective. Olivia is Ted's cat and Ted and Olivia are linked somehow. There's some weird vibes going on. A little girl, I guess, was murdered way back when 11 years ago, and someone has done something in Ted's backyard that is very unsettling. I'm hooked. <laughs> I'm really solidly, completely hooked, and I don't want to read the last book. I just want to keep reading this. So this could be the book that comes with me. The narration is very disjointed. Like I'm getting the feeling that Ted is a very unreliable narrator. Possibly Olivia is too but Ted seems to like lose time. There's just weird stuff going on. Very weird stuff. I am unsettled deeply. <laughs> I'm loving it. Hi, we're on the couch. I have finished first chapter of The Earth Witching. I'm also incredibly intrigued. Blood seems to be a big theme in this book and I'm really loving the setting that we're in. There's a prophet, there's a lamb that's been sacrificed, we're on the Sabbath, her best friend's getting married. There's a lot of conversation about birth and fertility and there's like someone in the woods, a witch in the woods. Um, I'm very intrigued. Okay, I have made my decision. I am going to, I'm going to be reading for this video, The Last House on Needless Street so intrigued by the first chapter of this that I had to continue reading into the second chapter. Super excited to be reading a book that is narrated in part by Kat. I love books with weird narrators, so I'm super down for that. I leave on Wednesday, so I'll start reading it on the plane and I will vlog that for you guys. And then I will let you know my thoughts starting on Friday. This will be my pre-summer ween read. And then I think I will probably be taking a few of the other books that I read a chapter of with me as well. I'm really intrigued by everything that I read, so stay tuned for next week's video where I may be reading some of the other books that I did a chapter of in this video. I'm gonna put this on pause until I leave on Wednesday, which is gonna be really difficult, but I'm gonna put it on pause until Wednesday. I will see you on the plane. <laughs> we're in a new location um, I have made it to my parents house it's Thursday morning right now I didn't film very much in the airport and on the airplane because my flight kept getting delayed so I got a lot of reading done but yeah my two and a half hour flight ended up being like an eight-hour journey and it was a lot so I slept in because I got in super late last night but I have read a lot of The Last House on Needless Street so that's about where I am right now I really love this book for like a plane journey, especially at night, because it's just really confusing. You don't know which narrators you can trust, if any of them. I'm not really sure what's going on. I have so many different theories and I'm just like really hooked. And it's also getting like really properly creepy. And I'm very, very much enjoying it. So I'm really glad that I read this one before Summerween so I can give you a recommendation if you want to participate in Summerween. So basically the plan for today is going to be to sit out on the deck at my lovely parents' house and finish reading this book. Very excited to figure out 
what's going on. I have some theories for what the big twist could be, but I really don't know, man. I really don't know. All right, enjoy this montage of me reading on a lovely, lovely summer day. I called the twist. I'm sure there's gonna be another twist because things have been happening that are not like really strong continuity errors. And I know it's not, she didn't make a mistake. <laughs> so something's going on and I called the first twist and we'll see if there's multiple other twists because I'm suspicious of everyone, every single person in here. I don't trust them. Unreliable. I'm like a hundred pages from the end. I'm having the time of my life. I've had two cats sitting on my lap, but every time I get the camera out to film the cat, they run away. So I'll try to get them on camera. Sweet Pea is sniffing at the door, so I'm gonna have to let her in. But this is my setup for the day. I'm on a nice little couch. I've got my book and I'm sitting by the lake. Oh, it's so beautiful here. I'm just having a great time. All right, time to read. Hello. I have finished the last house on Needless Street. And boy, do I have thoughts. Bang on the cat wants to go inside. You can see him. This is Mr. Shadow. Hey, buddy. Bye. So, this book is not what I was expecting it to be. <laughs> and I think that was the point of the book. And I don't want to say much about it because I'm going to spoil the book for you. I think it dealt with the topics that it covers, which I can't tell you because it's a spoiler really well and the author really did her research and I don't belong to that group of people so I can't speak on the representation. This is a hard book to talk about because it brings up the idea of like our content warnings spoilers and should we talk about content even if we're spoiling the book and the point of this book is that you don't know what it's about until the end and so it's like trying to pick apart preconceived notions and because of the book's intent it doesn't want you to know ahead of time but if you have any thoughts on that i've always been under the impression that a content warning is never a spoiler but with this book it feels different i don't know if you've read this book let me know in the comments what you think about that I think this is a great book to read here. I got to hang out with uh, my two black cats while reading about Olivia, the black cat in here. This book was seriously unsettling the whole way through. I absolutely love the way that it was written and I think I'll pick up more things by Katrina Ward. This is not the type of horror novel that I thought it was going to be and it took me by surprise. It was so interesting the way that this has been marketed and blurbed. I'm really glad that I read this and I would definitely recommend it if you're looking for something to read during summer ween. I think this is a good one. It's not going to be like anything else that you read during summer ween, I don't think. It'll still give you the creepy, unsettling things that you're looking for, and it's also packing a bigger punch and talking about bigger issues in a way that I haven't seen a horror novel try to do before. I really loved it. I would recommend. So this is coming out on the first day of the Summer Ween Readathon. Like I mentioned earlier, I'm going to link the creators below who have created this readathon, Olivia and Gabby. Highly encourage you to check out their stuff. I am going to go edit this video and get ready for my own Summer Ween. So I will be seeing you on Tuesday.